a call that, um, I guess an emergency call of a breakdown. Yeah, the Peterbilt, uh, a buddy of mine owns a Peterbilt, put a driver in it. And he was driving today and called him and told him the motor's making a horrible noise and it's knocking and he's afraid it's going to come apart or you know, destroy the engine or whatever. And we're out and about right now. Uh, Jeff just had a heart monitor put on and uh, so we're going to head out and go take a look at it and see what we can find. That motor didn't come apart. I just had my hands in the bottom of it. I don't know. I just put rods, mains, and oil pump, and a bunch of other stuff, accessory drive. So we're gonna go over and see what, see if we can get an idea of what it is. See if, if it's salvageable. Of course, this is this is his busiest part of the year right now, and the, this is actually his busiest weekend. So we're gonna go over and see if we can find out. Hopefully, it's not anything I've done. That's it. So I've got the radiator supports loose and I've got the mounts loose in the bottom and the shroud. I left the hoses. We're going to try and just lift this radiator up just enough that I can get it above that damper and get that out. So we'll see how it goes. Well, it's given me enough room to get into it. I don't know if I'll have enough room to get it actually off of there. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm hoping I don't have to take that coolant drain it all and take the radiator loose. I'm trying to do this as quick as I can. Save some time here. You can see where it was knocking against that cast iron bracket right there. That was probably the heavy noise and right down there that's probably what we were hearing. And this was banging around. Look at that. I mean it all looks like it's a new brake. I mean I don't see any rust on it. It's just real thin stamped steel. That sucks. All right, let's go see if we can find one. Well, we got it out. And there is our noise right there. The center of the pulley is completely busted out. It really did a number on this space or two. I'll have to see if we can find that. If not, we'll just have to reuse it for right now. kind of sucks, but we're under a time crunch. I don't have a lot of time. I can... Last time I needed one of them, um, Cummins didn't have it, and I had to find a used one somewhere. I'd like to do the dampener at the same time, but I don't know if that's going to be possible today, too. Holiday weekend, they're closed Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We'll be back open until Tuesday. i got to call them and see what they got. I'm going to attempt to show you a little bit of weld I was able to get on it on either side. You can't see it real well, but hopefully that's enough because all that's doing is centering this until your bolts are tight. Once the bolts are tight, this is not as important, but at least I'll be able to run the truck till I can get this part because it's holiday weekend. You know, you can't find parts. Actually, this part's obsolete, so i got to get it used. Mm. really pushing this half inch two by its limits here. I need a block, like a two by four to put in here. Okay. I gotta torque all these crank bolts. I welded that piece back together. I called Peter Zeal of HTP and asked him how I could weld this because it was it was a cast steel or cast iron and he, he instructed me how I could do it by heating it up and letting it cool and whatever and I don't know if it's gonna hold but it's enough to get it to where they can use the truck till we get the right part. And I put Loctite on the bolts now, so hopefully it won't come loose. I'm 
just going over them again to make sure they're all at 190 foot pounds. Ah. Okay, guess we're ready to try and drop this radiator back down. So back when we wanted, to, when I was doing this work, I wanted to send this radiator in to have it rebuilt because the bottom fins were getting pretty bad and he didn't want to spend the money for it. But now look, now it's leaking up here. Go figure. So a valve leaking here too, needs tightened up. Well, we got it all back together. He's gonna start it up and see how it sounds. And it's working correctly. As you can see it's it's gone uh, i got it all back together i test drove it 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 was fine um no noise at all smooth as glass but he had called me and i was on the phone i didn't answer it and he kept calling you know one one call after another after another so when i did answer it, he told me he says man it's, it's sounds like a rod knock it's like that bottom end came apart that you just put together well let me tell you how sick i was to my stomach you know thinking that something i did had had gone wrong and uh, so I drove out there and I was so worked up about this I went past the driveway where they were and I had to back in wasn't even paying attention I hit a storm sewer with the back right rear tire of my wife's van blew the sidewall of the tire out <laughs> so <laughs> I get up there to look at it never thought about grabbing the camera because I was already you know worked up and not having a good time and I heard that noise and it really did sound like a rod knock and uh, I started looking at it a little bit deeper. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna, before I do anything, let me drain the oil. I wanna see what's in there. I wanna see if there's any metal in the oil. I drained the oil, it was nice and clean. There was nothing in it. And that told me that more than likely it is not a problem with the bottom end. And But it sounded like it was like number one rod. That's what it sounded like. So I started tearing it apart, started looking at some stuff. And and uh, that's when I came across that, that pulley. Um, and I, I smacked that belt and I heard that noise and I'm like well that doesn't sound like it but there might be something else going on so I started taking it apart as you saw and those bolts that were in that crankshaft adapter were not tight they supposed to be torqued at 190 and they certainly weren't because when I put that socket on there I'm not saying they're finger, they were finger tight I mean something was moving but I don't think that's the cause of the broken pulley I think that pulley broke uh, that pulley broke because it, it just was metal fatigue and stamped steel but I think the I think them bolts came loose and that's what snapped the end of that uh, that thing off because I was told it had uh, it's, it's it started to get a vibration well that would tell us the same thing so I found a used adapter that was broken so we'll replace that and we're gonna replace the uh, the balancer the dampener actually and I ordered new bolts for it so We'll get that and we'll get it all replaced. But I told him I can no longer do this. This took me, I had it done in less than 24 hours, all said and done from the time he called me and he was back to back to work with the truck. But I'm not a repair facility. I'm not a on-call service road, road service guy, truck service guy. You know, I can't keep letting my life get interrupted with this crap. So I told him he needs to find another person to take care of his trucks because I just can't do this anymore because my stuff just falls behind. Because now, I'm, you know, it's a holiday weekend. The stuff I was going to do, I can't get parts for. So, here we are. But I did go ahead and put fresh oil in it. And uh, everything's handled there. So, 
that being said, oh yeah, and I just missed the rain too. It poured for 10 minutes and flooded my garage. It was just one of the one of the worst downpours we had in a while. So, anyways, it's done, and now we can get back to our regular, uh, only scheduled work that I was doing before he called. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.